Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on in Jamaica. As you know, I cover a lot of different subjects. Sometimes I cover Jamaica only because that's my heritage and what's going on there, you know, is of interest to me and fellow Jamaicans around the world. So um, I wanted to mention the new gun laws and their state of emergency and how their state of emergency is actually apparently reducing gun crime, well, not even gun crime, reducing murders by 64%. Apparently, when they lifted the state of emergency last time, it increased by 171% of murders. And there's four murders a day. So I just wanted to kind of just quickly go through um, the new gun law in Jamaica, why it's come into place and the impact it's meant to have and what it's going to cover and what the fine is or the imprisonment. Well, the imprisonment is up to life, actually. Um, it depends on the degree of the crime and that kind of stuff. So the use, the use of states of public emergency, they're called SOEs, has proven to be the quickest and most effective way of rapidly reducing violent crimes, says Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson. During the first period of SOEs declared in November, murders were reduced by as high as 64%, and increased by as much as 171% during the seven-day period when the emergency powers were removed, he informed. Now, I'm not quite sure because when I went to um, Jamaica two or three years ago, well, it's more than that now because time flies, it's probably about five years ago, um, the state of emergency was on then and... Um, I'm not sure how effective it is. It's obviously effective according to these numbers. But I remember um, I was going with a friend and we were going um, from Montego Bay out into the country some. And we had to go through the police barricade. The thing is, is that as soon as they knew that we were foreigners or English, they let us go through. Now, how do they know that we didn't have guns? So, I mean, there's almost, um, it's taken for granted. It's a bit like over here where there's a stereotype on what a criminal looks like. Usually they say they wear dark clothes, black clothes, and they have hoodies. And that's a stereotype for when they're stopping and searching people in the UK. Similarly, they have a stereotype of what a gunman looks like, probably in their head. And those are the type of people they stop and search or they stop and search their cars. I'm just hypothesizing. I don't know if that's true. I only say that because, like I said, when we went to Jamaica, we went through those um, barricades. They just asked us a question. As soon as they heard my accent or my friend's accent, they just said, OK, go through. Now, we could have had a you know, our trunk could have been full of guns for all they knew. I'm just saying. I don't think they should look specifically for a certain type because people know how to behave. And I mean, like they do over here, they tell you to wear a suit and tie when you're going to the courtroom so you look respectable. So these things, these um, people who deal drugs, it's like um, they know how to present themselves. And so they shouldn't be looking for the what seems to be obvious or the stereotype. But anyway, the new Firearms Act came into effect at the beginning of November, so just last month. Since the beginning of this year, the country has recorded a daily average of four murders. That's four murders a day. This peaked in September when the daily average reached five murders. I mean, what they're saying is, well, actually, he says nearly five murders. I mean, how can you have half of a murder or a nearly five? I mean, if it was four murders a day, 
um, at the beginning of the year, and now it's nearly five murders. How does that how does that compute? Anyway, I'm not going to question it. A total of 70 persons have been charged under the new Firearms Prohibition, Restriction and Regulation Act. 63 were men, 7 were women, and they were charged between November the 1st and December the 20th. What, one month? The Commissioner pointed out that the majority of those charged fall into the 16 to 30 age group. So these are young people. The legislation distinguishes between prohibited weapons, unregulated firearms, activities connected to the use of the firearm, and whether or not the person is authorised or registered to use the firearm. The bill also outlines the objectives that established a framework that prohibits firearms and ammunition that are illicitly traded and which regards possession of those prohibited firearms and ammunition as the foundation on which other heinous and violent crimes are committed. That's really what he said. What they're saying is that, you know, this gun gun trading, whatever, you, you know, you're doing illicitly. Um, breach, breaches of the new Firearms Prohibition Restriction and Regulation Act 2022 which is now in effect, because it came into effect last month, will result in penalties ranging from 15 years to life imprisonment. I wonder if that's going to stop people. Or the thought of getting 15 years or life imprisonment. The thing is, those people who are carrying guns, they're doing it to protect themselves. It's just like in the UK where the kids were carrying knives not because they wanted to use it, but because they wanted to protect themselves if somebody came to, came at them with a knife. I think the principle is the same in Jamaica. You know, they don't want to use a gun, but if somebody pulls one out on them, they want to be able to defend themselves. It must be awful to live like that, live in fear that your life is going to be taken and you're always having to defend your life awful. Anyway, states of public emergency SOEs are now in effect in St Anne, Clarendon, where my mum comes from. I can't imagine little Clarendon being a state of emergency. St Catherine, Kingston, St Andrew, St James, Westmoreland and Hanover and are intended to curtail increased criminal activities and bolster public safety. So I don't know how they do that because a lot of these deaths are sometimes domestic. Most of them are domestic. Most of them are, you know, arguments. How how does, I mean, okay, if you don't have the gun, you can't do the harm. But often these things are kind of emotional. They just happen in the spur of the moment. By the time, but I guess if you don't have it in the first place, you can't use it. But... These guns are getting into the country somehow. And it's not little people that can get these guns into the country. So they need to be, rather than putting out gun laws and um, putting people in prison, what they need to do is find out the people who are bringing the guns in the country. That's what they need to do and stop them. I mean, I think they had a heist the other day and found quite a few guns, but they need to do more of that. And that's all from me, Black Bright News on YouTube.